Hey guys, this is Caspio Tape, and today you join me on a rather large planet. It looks a little like Kerbin, but a lot more like Earth. Yes, I'm actually playing some Realism Overhaul for the first time in a very long time. I used to play this all the time on the channel. I did a series where I went to the moon, back when I was very foolish about mods and didn't install the right amount of mods to make it easy, so it was nearly impossible, but uh, obviously I managed it. Um, but anyway, today I'm just doing a little thing, because I'm not, I'm not going to do a series or anything on this. Um, I'm, I just have a few missions I kind of want to do, and because I've got the whole Realism Overhaul installed, which is the full-size Kerbin, a bunch of other mods to make it really realistic, including remote tech, I'm going to need some uh, communication stuff, aren't I? So, um, today I'm launching three satellites to uh, geostationary orbit, at which they will... Well, basically give me coverage over all of Kerbin. Uh, you saw just then I'm actually launching out of Brazil, because that's actually very close to the equator where I'm launching. So, um, that's, well, that's why I picked that launch site, because I want equatorial orbits, because geostationary orbits only work over at, um, uh, the equator, or because of the way Earth rotates, um, they actually do move in the sky. You will notice that it's very choppy at this point. I'm not really sure what that does, that's about. The frame rate's actually pretty much fine. Um, I get pretty good frame rates for about a second, and then this annoying choppiness, and it's very, very obvious at four times time accelerate. I didn't really see that coming. Um, but yeah, so it is a bit not great to watch. It does improve later, though. It's just the lower atmosphere, which is weird. And weirdly, now you can see this uh, engine effect. It looks really weird at four times time accelerate, but it's trying to replicate the whole um, as the atmosphere gets thinner and you go start moving faster. The uh, engine kind of f the engine exhaust kind of flares out around the engine, uh, but it looks just kind of stupid <laughs> from here. Maybe that's how it really looks, but uh, not from my experience. And we start to get some serious burning effects, um, which, well, they, they, it, I think this is actually uh, kind of too many, too much burning effects. So this is actually not a bad launch tra trajectory, um, but I'm getting some serious burning effects. I think that's just, well, I think that's just a uh, happenstance of these mods not really working that perfectly right now, but still, it was a pretty good launch. Um, I ditched the first stage there, we're going pretty fast. Um, very fast for Kerbal Space Program, I think that's about 3 kilometers a second, but we need to get up to 8 kilometers a second, and then actually we need to get up to way faster, because we've got to go to 35,000 kilometers ish above the um, surface of Earth, and I'm pointing this, uh, one of my radar dishes at, not radar dishes, my communications dishes at Earth, so that it will pick up all of the um, launch sites around Kerbin. That, that's the nice thing about this, not Kerbin, Earth. Um, that's the nice thing about the, the uh, newer versions that has a lot of um, launch sites and the and a remote tech integrates all of them and uses them all as uh, communications bits basically so uh I, so you don't just have one communication place so it doesn't make um, near earth kind of stuff much easier but I still want a satellite network to have full coverage I only need three you only really need two actually is quite well explained by Bob Fitch um, because you get a slight blind zone, but because uh, if they're so far away, they do cover almost all of um, Earth, but not not quite. It's, it like misses out a little bit, so I'm going to put up a third. But anyway, we're getting up to altitude now, and this rocket's performed very well, actually. It's quite a nice rocket. It's quite a small rocket. It's a three-meter rocket, which sounds big if you just play Kerbal Space Program, but in reality, that's uh, smaller than the Falcon 9. The Falcon 9's a 3.7-meter rocket. Um, for reference, the Saturn V was a 10-meter rocket, and the, well, 10-ish meter, and the um, uh, space launch system will be 8.4 meters in diameter. So yeah, it's a re re relatively small rocket. Um, and yeah, the weird thing, actually, is you'll notice I actually have the throttle at pretty much minimum on these uh, stages, because for some reason the engines throttle higher, and some, well, some of the engines have a higher thrust at the lowest throttle possible, which is really weird. But anyway, the... Um, Stage doesn't actually carry me all the way into orbit, but I cu um, I've actually brought a huge amount of hydrazine fuel in the satellite. It was mainly so I could do a lot of maneuvers, but I have so much fuel that I can actually push myself all the way into an orbit. And you'll be looking at my um, mech job window right now and seeing that my orbital period is two days, and me thinking, well, Peter, you've screwed this up. That's not geosynchronous. But those are four Kerbin days, which is six hours. I just have forgotten to change them at this point. But anyway, um, yeah, that's. Uh, Oh yeah, I left it at this point because I thought I'd failed, basically. Um, but then I realized that I actually do have enough fuel after a little bit of thinking. And that these uh, solar panels actually will provide the necessary power to power this whole satellite. And that's why I decided to actually full-on go for it, because I thought it didn't have enough um, power generation. But it indeed does. I'm just going to have a quick sip of coffee, if you don't mind. Because my mouth is quite dry, and the room I'm in is incredibly warm, especially with my computer on. 
So yeah, I'm. Uh, it's a weirdly warm in summer right now. Yeah, you can see the RCS going a little bit crazy right there. And I actually have two thrusters at the back because those um, thrusters on the side are for more maneuvering than anything else. Uh, not maneuvering for um, uh, translation and rotation. And they're very weak, but the thrusters on the back are very. Uh, I think they have almost provide maybe a kill and even a thrust, or maybe a little less. I've completely forgotten. But yeah, realism overhaul um, is a really good set of mods. I will link the page. It is quite difficult. Well, it's not difficult to install because I uh, actually um, Ccan the uh, the manager, the mod manager that, in, that um, automatically downloads and installs mods for you, has restored my um, my love. It managed to install this for me because I it wouldn't last uh, um, last version, but yeah, it did for this and it made it very easy. I just installed uh, the realism overhaul, the real solar system, a bunch of engine packs, and there was one I had to download myself. I forgot what it was. I'm using so many mods, I have no idea what's going on. So if you want me to link all the mods. I pretty much can't, but if I, I'll point you to the realism overhaul thread, which will help you with all of this and make it very easy, um, because it knows a lot more than I do. Uh, the mod set is not very fully stable right now. I know a lot of other YouTubers are holding off doing this sort of thing, while a lot of other I know Bob Fitch and Scott Manley are. But I thought I'd uh, jump in and uh, just do a, have a little fun with it, because it is working. It's not perfect right now, but it's um, it's working enough. Uh, for me to do this sort of thing. So I have a few missions planned, and these aren't long-range um, communication satellites. These are just for um, pretty much, I think, low Earth orbit and maybe the moon. Uh, 40, 400 megameters, that's moon distance, right? I'm just going to have some more coffee. I don't want it going cold. Um, but yeah, yeah, these are just for near-Earth core communications. But I will put up some long-range communication satellites and maybe just ground stations, because these ones aren't particularly long-range. But yeah. Um, anyway, the next launch is pretty much the same. I've sm slightly modified the payload. I removed one of the decouplers because it doesn't need to. Um, but yeah, again, launching out of Brazil. Uh, a little behind the last satellite, hopefully about a third of an orbit, because I am putting up three, even though you only really need two. Um, three is good, so you have full coverage or just uh, as a backup. But yeah, this launch went off really well. Uh, really nice how well this launch went off. I do love uh, launching in realism overhaul, even though there's a bit of a slow frame rateness. Um, it does just... It, you just have so much time <laughs> compared to curb, in normal curbing where you have to stage separate then instantly go and this you just have so much time. I love I love I love realism overhaul so much. I'm so glad I'm back to it. But yeah, I think if you're uh, pretty experienced in KSP, you know, you you've done a lot of things, you're pretty good at it now. Um realism overhaul's a good way to go. It's just it's just nice. And building like Mercury rockets and things are really cool. Anyway, yeah, as I said, that went off pretty much perfectly, so I just skipped through the whole launch and thing. It was basically the same as last time. So yeah, this is just me completing my burn. You can see uh, how many ground stations I'm connected to, and indeed um, the other satellite, because that satellite will point at a ground station and an active vessel, which is me. So you can see there's a line between the two satellites on the map, which means I'm communicating with it, or have the potential to. I'm not actually, I'm using a ground station because we have so many. Um, so yeah, these satellites are actually kind of reasonably superfluous at this point, but it just gives me full coverage and you do lose um, connection a lot when you're in low Earth orbit because there's the, you're just in the blind so much from horizons just because that's how horizons work. But anyway, yeah, we'll... Um, stop ourselves here. It looks like we've gone in, into our one day orbit. Yeah, I'm just fine tuning now with the uh, fine controls and I actually have uh, pretty much one day. I want to get it perfect. You can see my orbital period in the MechJab window um, is getting really close to perfect and uh, a little more, a little more. Can we get it perfect? It's off by four milliseconds or something. Um, but yeah, I want to get it just a tiny bit more perfect. I want it on one day. I wonder if I can just back it up a tiny bit more. Um, Apparently not. Apparently I gave up like a putz. Oh no! Well, that's close enough. I think the other one was actually exactly on one day, but this one wasn't. Ah, coffee. The worst thing to cool you down on a hot day. But anyway, I've got to point this nearer the sun so that all the solar panels can get energy because they do not provide as much as you would, as they do in um, the stock game because it's slightly more realistic. Anyway, I'm going to actually deploy another, um, another of these thingies. These are... Uh, freaking communi uh, the communications dishes, and uh, I'm going to use active vessel, obviously, so that uh, I'm pointing at a ground station, the active vessel, and I might as well point constantly at the other comsat, the Geocom 1, because that way, um, if it for some reason loses a ground station, I don't know why, but if it did, uh, it could use this to kind of relay, um, relay commands, because that's the nice thing about remote tech, is you can actually use, like, say if I wanted to get a ground station... Uh, signal from uh, sta a signal from the ground station on Kerbin to the dark side of the moon. I could uh, 
pretty much like either throw it to maybe a communication satellite um, in geostationary orbit, and that could bounce it to a satellite in a high orbit above the moon, and that could bounce it to a satellite um, in a slightly higher orbit above the moon, well, just in a high orbit above the moon that has coverage of the dark side, and that could send it right to my spacecraft. And you can actually programming um, communication thing, well, you can program in, um, like, uh, commands you want it to do at a later date. So yeah, that's quite cool. Anyway, this uh, launch has been left in because some weird stuff happened. I'm not really sure what happened, but it did. Mm. This launch also wasn't so perfect because I went too steeply. I went too steeply into that good night. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, and <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh. Uh, but yeah, this went off a little terribly, and you can see it's still stuttering a bit, which isn't actually that bad. I prefer, I for some reason, no, I don't like stuttering. It's really annoying, um, but it's more annoying. It's better than flying Odin carrier to orbit. I've just got used to there being occasional problems in KSP, especially because I play with so many mods. Um, but anyway, we get the weird engine effects again because uh, this is actually a KW rocketry engine. And one of the very important things you're actually going to want to do if you install Realism Overhaul is once you've got real fuels and all that, uh, you'll want to get a um, you want to get some part configurations because otherwise there still be the weird masses. They'll still use liquid fuel and oxidizer, and all the engines will use liquid fuel and oxidizer. So you want to get stock-like um, engine configs, and that'll um, and that'll allow you to use your your engines using real fuels and things, and they'll all just work much better. I might do a video on just how to set it up because it isn't quite as straightforward as. Um, just using CCAN, you've got to get a few extra mods, but it's not, it's surprisingly easy. CCAN has made it crazily easy. Um, I did kind of neglect CCAN for a while just because it kind of didn't work perfectly uh, when I was using it before, but now it does, so that's really good. Um, anyway, that went off pretty well, although the weird thing, damn, I forgot to mention, if you look really closely just then, um, is there was some weird debris in my in my trail, it looked like I dropped some debris, but when I checked the flight events, nothing had broken off, um, and there was nothing nothing to come off the satellite. So I don't know what the debris was. It was definitely obviously a UFO. And it's funny whenever there's anything anywhere near a rocket, and it's like not fully explained. UFO theorists are like, it's a UFO. It's like there was a quadcopter filming um, the Falcon 9 reusable, and they're like, it's clearly a UFO. It's like, no, it's a quadcopter. Anyway, I'm just going to turn the camera shake off because camera shake is the worst. I know I've said it's good before, but I really hate camera shake now. Like, it's fun once or twice, or maybe if you're making a cinematic, but the majority of the time it's like, why? I don't want my camera shaking so much I can't do anything. Especially in a plane. What the fuck is that shit? Anyway, uh, the other thing that went really badly in this launch, other than weird stuff coming out of the exhaust and me being way too steep, is I am actually way off course. I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm too inclined to stay, well, I'm not near enough the equator for my liking. So yeah, I put myself in the right position, and that has burned a lot of fuel, um, basically. Well, not that much fuel, but it's burned too much fuel putting myself in the right position and dealing with my flatness. So yeah, now I have to probably use a lot more hydrazine. I'm not sure if I brought enough fuel. Um, so yeah, anyway, this is still at 4 times time accelerate because it's fairly just doing maneuvers and you can see it reasonably well at 4 times time accelerate. Anyway, you'll see I'm in the same position as one of the satellites, which makes this satellite reasonably superfluous. So I'm going to have to drop it back about a third of an orbit. So I'm going to burn myself into a two-thirds of a day orbit. Um, so it's 18 hours, no, 16 hours. <laughs> Get your maths right. Um, so I'm going to burn myself into a 16-hour orbit such that uh, for every orbit I do, I drop back by a third, or do I, no, I actually speed up by a third, um, I, I speed up by a third on the other satellites, so a third of an orbit that is, so that uh, in two orbits I will be two thirds of an orbit in front of this satellite, which will put me roughly in the right position, which will mean I have full coverage of Kerbin, as long as I have enough fuel, and uh, am I there yet? No, 14 hours, it'll be a little out, a little bit, a little bit more burning, oh. and the uh, SES unit's using far too much fuel, trying to stabilize itself um, when, the, when it ha already has torque. So at some point I will disable those um, uh, like radial RCS ports because they're not really helping anyone. They're just getting in the way. Um, so yeah, anyway, now I'm in the right position, um, roughly. Yeah, that looks pretty good. They uh, about a third of an orbit apart, so that's quite nice. And uh, now we just burn ourselves, well, disable these, because they're using, they, I don't want them to stabilize. I don't want to use fuel stabilizing when I have a reaction wheel. Although they're nowhere near as powerful as on the um, 
stock game because it's much more realistic. The thing is, is when you play this, you will be a little bit shocked by it's just really realistic. Yeah, the tanks are lighter and the engines are better and things. Well, they're actually slightly less efficient a lot of the time. And you'll be like, oh, this is way, um, way easier. But, uh, but yeah, there's a lot of things that make it a lot harder. And you don't have to use remote tech and things. Um, I do like to use it. I just like full realism at this point. But you don't have to, um, obviously. You you do have the choice of what mods you install. <laughs> but yeah, no, it is, uh, it is just quite a nice uh, quite a nice addition. Anyway, this falls short by about two hours or... No, more like three hours. So yeah, this has failed to get into the right position. But I'm going to use it anyway. If it becomes a real problem, I'm just going to replace it, obviously. But uh, right now I have pretty good coverage. I only really need two, and a third is a bit of a, you know, bit of a little extra. So I might put another one up. But yeah, um, so this will help me do future missions. I might do some to the moon. I really want to go to Mars. I actually, if I have time to get good enough, would love to go to Pluto. Um, although I think to do it reasonably, I'd have to do a gravity shift off Mars, and that'll take a lot of planning. So maybe I will. Maybe I'll figure out how to go to Pluto and beat New Horizons to it, because I want to do that in as many games as possible. I want to do it in Kerbal Space Program, I want to do it in Elite Dangerous, I want to beat the crap out of New Horizons. I am the best spacecraft. Uh, but yeah, now it's just a matter of setting up all my antenna to point in the right way. Not that this is a very useful satellite anymore, but yeah. So, I hope you have enjoyed this, as this is the end of the episode. Uh, well, not really episode, just end of the video, I guess. But yeah, I hope you have enjoyed this. I hope you want to see more Real Solar System, because I love it. I, I freaking just love everything. I like doing Mercury missions and Saturn missions and all that stuff, and actually go to the planet Saturn. And they've renamed all the uh, planets to the correct names now, which is much easier for me, given that I often get planet names wrong. So yeah, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been Chaos People with Tape. I will see you next time.